Okay, folks. Equi room, but I'm here at the, uh, the Bridgewater Hall in Manchester. Over editing here. I'm not going to tidy up. We're all ad hoc. Yeah, and uh, day off yesterday, I, I posted a little video last night about some of the, the things I was doing down in London and trying out instruments. And, uh, so that was my day off, and here we are here today, Bridgewater Hall. And I wanted to share one of the warm up things that I've been working on. Um, my lips are really, really chapped, and this used to always freak me out. I don't know if you'll be seeing the camera. Really dry all around here and everything. I don't do well with, with lip bands and things like that. They actually often leave them feeling a lot worse than without. And very rarely do they crack and, and, and bleed or anything, but it's something to consider when we're in the colder weather. And what I learned when I was out on cruise ships many, many moons ago was that um, the, the wind burn and the sun burn and everything very rarely actually affected the, the vibrating patches in the centre. And that was something that kind of uh, took a little bit of time to learn about, but in the grand scheme of things, nine times out of ten, everything's going to be okay. So what I'm going to do today is a component of the warm-up that uh, I actually recorded already, but I wasn't, I wasn't that happy with it. Um, because it was, I didn't do it in my main instrument, did it in a different horn, and I didn't really feel as though it was really um, benefits from this. Incidentally, anyone can come in here at any point. I'm in early today in the, in the theatre, uh, where did I say, Bridgewater Hall in Manchester. And what we're going to do today is um, have a look at a lead pipe warm up that um, I've been inspired by from various other people on the internet. The most well known versions of, of, of lead pipe warm ups come from obviously um, late great Willie Madden and all of his teachings. And this is a variation that I've picked up from a few other musicians online. Um, and that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to take you through that very, very quickly. Incidentally, I always do a little bit of lip flapping. <laughs> And I also always do some pencil uh, technique. Now, I actually neglected to bring a pencil with me. So what I've done before and what I do is as well, it's actually my flow horn mouthpiece. It's not the same as gripping the mouthpiece or rather exciting the armature with the compression behind the mouthpiece and, sorry, behind the pencil and engaging. But in terms of like having something of a similar type diameter and just blocking off the hole obviously at the back and compressing against it. <clears throat> blocking off the hole his head. <sighs> you still get a similar effect and I quite like that engagement. So anyway, I've already done that. Lead pipe. Standard lead pipe is pretty much So again, now I had all day so day off, absolutely fine, there's no reason why I would have forgotten to play trumpet within that time, and the concerns about chap lips, nothing there, I mean I can feel the tension and the actual surface tension of the skin when the skin is dry, that's absolutely fine. So that's pretty much it now. Um, there's a version that I've covered before, I believe Mike Lovett shared it with me, where we line up the mouthpiece and we blow through. <laughs> Similar type of effect, really all we're just there is relying on the air blowing through our lips, blowing through the mouthpiece. Meaning what's in the lead pipe and then start my buzz. So the variations in this are essentially moving around the lead pipe. And there are quite a few exponents of this method who do way better than me. But this is the little routine that I'm going to take you through now. So where are we? We're coming for 4 minutes and 45 seconds. I'm going to see how long this takes. I'm just going to go straight through it. Uh, I might try and edit this in the laptop back at the hotel uh, once I finish here. But for now, we're just going to go straight through this little pipe. I'll talk through bits and pieces of it.
I'm not trying to steer the pitch other than just do a kind of note bend down and then allow the pitch to come back up as I would in a normal note bend. Now that's technically about a semitone there. I'm now going down past that semitone to a tone and then down to a tone and a half, around about down to an E and I'm maybe go down to around about E flat and a D as well. Because of course our lead pipe, this is a little bit longer being a reverse lead pipe trumpet, so it's slightly lower than a concert E flat, um, but the concept's all the same. trying to hit any pitch on the way down, kind of referencing that in my head all the way through. And the next part we'll do is now, in its entirety, we're going to step down eventually all the way down to what would be our pedal F or thereabouts, and then a quick touch down to bottom pedal F and then back up to where we started, so we'll do that all in one go now. That's what I like to think about as, as being part one or part one A of, of this routine where we've really just blown straight through our lead pipe, all the way, touching all the way down to that pedal F type thing, really just trying to think about kind of get a nice buzzy tingly feeling going here and, and I am. So the next part, I love saying this to my, my students, particularly the younger ones, it sounds like a strangled chicken or a, or a a strangled rat or some, 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 some creature going through <laughs> torture and pain. Anyway, so what we're going to do is we're going to gradually push up through the lead pipe and there'll be a harmonic click at some point where it goes up to around about an octave above our starting point. So do it slowly. <laughs> what I'm doing there is I'm really just keeping the corners engaged for a standard or mature shape. I'm thinking about just pushing my tongue up towards the roof of my mouth to excite that air and get that, that air, air stream moving that little bit faster. I'm really trying to not use any pressure whatsoever, which is why this routine really kind of came around in terms of like just, just constantly dealing with my embouchure and my teeth and my gum set up after the surgery. I'm trying to find a way to, to warm up as much of my range as possible without actually worrying about playing notes and, and playing in tune and stuff like that, which is very important of course, but I'm thinking about the energy here, okay? So we're going to do that again, and when the, the the harmonic flick happens and it goes up, it's actually a little bit flat, so I'm just thinking about support up to that octave area for pitch, and then we'll come back down. I am going through a lot of air quick because there's there's next to no resistance in the lead pipe. So any resistance is here, it's created by the tongue arch and the mouth. I'm trying to think always about the fullness of sound, which is a huge component of the lead pipe exercise. And that's the thing that really drew me to it initially is like if you can get a massive sound, a huge resonance sounds out of this little bit of tiny pipe, but a time you connect it all back together and it comes out of here, it's massive, it's absolutely huge. I was going to empty the water out my tongue, but I'm silly. Okay, so the next component is once we got up to that octave flick and we're at the top part of that partial, just gradually push it up. It kind of goes 
A G A flat if you want to give it a pitch, okay? Okay, so it's kind of a kind of random pitchiness type thing going on there. And really what I'm working towards now is the next partial push up. At no point I really want to try and push, I really want to try and overwork the embouchure. Sometimes it goes up to the next partial quite quickly, and sometimes I have to think about really getting a good strong focused airstream before it naturally wants to click up. At no point do I want to over manipulate the embouchure, that'd be a good outtake. Um, at all points I'm trying to think about the air being steered or controlled by tongue arch control, okay? So by doing this part as well, I'll also add on the octave, the lower octave come um, um, part where we're down to our pen left. So in its entirety, where we are now is this. Go around that a couple of times, really just thinking about the tongue arch controlling the airstream. I'm really hard to do any work. I'm getting a nice energized buzz area, top and bottom vibrating patches are feeling really, really nice engaged. And I am starting to feel a little bit of work here, which is a good thing. I mean, I, I don't want to feel like I'm straining anything. Obviously the embouchure and the corners and everything down here are having to deal with controlling and managing that more intense airstream. So the next part, probably part two, is the best way to think about it. It's actually start at that higher partial and then think about pushing up. It's around about a fifth. It's not really so. If you see this written out, you're probably somewhere around a concert E flat going up to a concert B flat, or obviously an hour pitch that'd be an F to a C in the top of the state. And bear in mind, we're not really technically played any trumpet yet. So we're going to start on that higher pitch and see if we can just get that higher click to happen. It may not happen, I'm not entirely sure. Almost really interesting. I can feel both vibrating patches want to work at different points there, so obviously they're not ready to do it. So we'll just work on it a couple of times. Think about the tongue arch control, making sure the compression support is in place. So there you go, the best way I can describe that feeling is you can actually feel a click in the airspeed where both vibration patches jump up to this next pitch level. And again, if the trumpet's all back together, that'd be round about a top C. Now, we'll maybe give it a go to say to see how high we can push up beyond that. And the next partial click would be to our high F or high concert E flat up in the ledger lines. I'm not too fussed about playing up there just now because in the show that I'm doing, with uh, Ali coming, the highest note I play is a D, and that's once. It's, it's very low orchestrated, it's very almost chamber-esque type work, but there's a lot of um, cabaret style um, music in there, and some kind of pop side type music. It doesn't really go up into the upper registers, but in terms of having full music control on my register, then it's somewhere that I'd really like to touch base. After I do this, I'll continue with my regular warm-up routine that you've all seen before. Um, so I'm going to start that higher partial now. I'm going to push up to that next partial, so that's like the third partial, if you think about our low F, then the octave, and then where we are to the C, pushing just beyond that to see where we can get to. Without strain. Ah. 
I'm happy with that. I can sit, like I said, I'm not playing up there just there. And I know that I could probably, with the tuning slide back on, manage to play up there to that full register. Um, and I will do so in the rest of the warm up. So that's it for now. Um, I'm going to see if we can edit this and make it a little bit prettier. The noise in this room is crazy. It's really, really loud. Um, so we'll see if we can manage into the sound. And really, folks, that's it. So thanks for watching. Um, I am going to be producing a little PDF of this. And if you would like it, then pop a message in the comments. Um, and that's all for now. So from one of the orchestra rooms, dressing rooms at the Bridgewater Hall in Manchester, uh, goodbye. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, stay smart, and we'll see you again soon. Cheers, bye-bye.